Hi, everyone. It's Mr. Vallejo. How are you doing? Um, today in Chem Lab, we are doing a small scale lab called Paper Chromatography of Food Dyes. You should have the handout or your chemistry textbook if you have the correct textbook. And uh, let me go ahead and share the screen with you and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go over to the hand that looks like this. Uh, this is on page 254 of the Pearson Chemistry book, if you have that. If not, then uh, you should have this uh, page in your learning management system, which is either Canvas or uh, Schoology. All right, let's take a look. Uh, the purpose of this lab is to use paper chromatography to separate and identify food dyes in various samples. So what we're going to do is I have uh, four different uh, food dyes with me. And uh, people often call this food coloring. So we're gonna take a look at red, yellow, green, and blue food coloring. And we're going to separate the chemicals that are in the food coloring and see what makes up the different food colorings, okay? All right, so let me uh, start you off by, by uh, showing you the food coloring. And then also I want you to think about any uh, expectations you have. In other words, let's have you make a hypothesis. I'm gonna stop the screen share and I'm going to screen share a different way. I'll put on my dot camera. I want to show you here. Uh, let's see. Let's do it this way, I think. Uh, you should see. Oh, I got my food coloring right here. Hang on just a second. Got to set up. And whoops. All right. And let's fix that before we get any further. Alrighty, so again, let's have you think about your expectations. Let's call that your hypothesis. Um, let me switch over to the document camera and uh, see what's going on there. Okay, here are the four different food colors for you. You know, red, yellow, let me focus that a little bit better so that you can maybe even read the words there, red, yellow, green and blue food coloring. And uh, before you look at it too intently, go ahead and have you write your hypothesis, please. Hypothesis, I think that the colors are made of these dyes. Okay, so let's think about that for a moment. If you need to go ahead and pause the video right now and go ahead and write yourself uh, a hypothesis. These four food colors, uh, these food dyes, these food coloring, uh, or is it made up of solely red or is it made up of a combination of, of uh, different chemicals you think? Okay, let's give you a moment to go ahead and, and write a hypothesis. Alrighty, now that you have a hypothesis, let's take a look at the procedure. Uh, it's on the handout, I'll move that up so you can see it. You can see the materials listing there and also the procedure. So the procedure says cut a five centimeter by 10 centimeter strip of chromatography paper and label it with the pencil as shown. So uh, being I'm in my classroom, I have uh, some older chromatography paper right here. And what I'm gonna do is take a piece out. And if you don't have chromatography paper, you can use other items. Uh, if you are a Gorman charter student, then you will um, have one of these in your kit. And so you could, uh, you could use the piece of paper that, that's in your kit, um, in, your, uh, yeah, in your Gorman Charter uh, chemistry kit. Uh, if you don't, you, you, know, you could use a coffee filter if you have one of those. Um, those will work just fine also. If you don't have a coffee filter, if you have a thicker paper towel, that will work 
as well. So what we're going to do in the instructions, let's cut a five centimeter by 10 centimeter strip of chromatography paper and label it with a pencil as shown. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I've got some chromatography paper right here. And so I'm going to uh, swap that out with uh, my document camera so you can see me do it. And, and so now we have uh, uh, a piece of uh, laboratory uh, filter paper, but you don't have to have that. Again, you can have uh, you can have a coffee filter, or you could use a um, you could use a, a thick paper towel. So I need a piece that's ten centimeters long. So I want to cut it there and there, right? Um, and then. Uh, uh, the directions say five centimeters, so I could actually cut a five centimeter strip if I go across this way. Five centimeters from here. And it's not crucial that that's exactly right here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it as best I can. Uh, so we can follow the instructions and minimize the variables that we have. Okay, so. Uh, cutting the, the strip. By the time you're done, you can have something that looks like this, okay? Whether yours is laboratory grade filter paper like I have, or if you have a paper towel, or you have a coffee filter. Actually, coffee filter works just fine. I, and I have some that, uh, in the other room, but I uh, happen to have this available. So um, you want a line two centimeters from the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and put a line two centimeters from the bottom like that. Okay. And then I'm going to equally space four dots, and those will be the beginning points of the dies. We're going to call this red, red, yellow, green. And it looks like I need to sharpen this pencil because the lead is off center. Uh, green and blue. Okay, so so that is what's going on there. So I'm going to, uh, as you can see from the instructions, cut a five centimeter, five centimeter by 10 centimeter strip of chromatography paper, label it with a pencil as shown. So now I want to label it uh, like this one here and the right food color samples. Right, and a 0.1% NaCl solution. And then my name, try not to put too, you know, or maybe I can write smaller, but this will, you'll have a separation and this will be fine. Okay, so now I've got that. Um, now on the instructions here, it says, there's a different toothpick to place a spot of each of the four food colors on the X on your chromatography paper. Oh, they wanted an X, not a dot. That's fine. I'll make it an X. And now I have an X instead of a dot. All right. So now I'm going to go over here. And I happen to have my uh, food coloring right there. Okay. Let me adjust the, the light a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. All right. And I happen to have a bunch of toothpicks right here. I'm going to go ahead and spot each of these X's with the different food coloring. And I'm going to spot it and then let it dry. Uh, need to let it dry for a few minutes. But oh man, there's the reds all over the place. Okay. Try not to squeeze that when you open it. I got some on my desk. And so there's a red. I'm going to put a spot right here. And then you're going to let that dry. Um, you want to try to keep it fairly small right there. But don't put too much on there because you want it to dry as well. So I'm going to call that good. And I'm going to get rid of this in my wastebasket to the right off the screen. Now I'm going to do the same thing with all the different colors. Use red. And I'm going to flip this away from me because I know it squirts. So there's the yellow. And I take that, put it in there, get some yellow, get the yellow, touch it to the paper, and it'll spread out like that. Just 
since I did two on the red, I'm gonna to try to do two on all of them now. So there's yellow. And then I gotta try uh, a green and the blue. So yeah, I'm opening both the green and the blue. So uh, won't have a problem with that. Uh, the blue one, it doesn't have a nice tip like the other three bottles. Uh, here's the green. I take the green and put it in and I'm gonna to touch it to the paper. Okay, here's the green. And then one more I have is the blue. So I'm gonna take the blue and touch that to the paper also. And just touch that. And then there's the blue one right there. All right, looks pretty good. And they're all fairly equal as best I could do. I'm gonna put the labels on these because these things get all over the place and one drop will ruin your day. So I've got the yellow closed up and also I have the red closed up. Okay, so now we got our chromatography paper. Let's go back to instructions. Uh, while we're doing the other parts, we're gonna let this dry. We'll move this off screen for us and then take a look at the instructions again. Where are we? We are right here. Uh, allow the spot to dry for a few minutes. Okay, in the meantime, it says fill the plastic cup so its bottom is just covered with the solvent. The solvent is 0.1% sodium chloride solution. So you've got to make that yourself with some, with some, um, with some salt. Uh, but, uh, but you also need to know uh, how, to, how to make the solution. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, show you how to make a 1% solution. If it says it's a 1% solution, no, no, it didn't say 1%, it said 0.1%. So let's see, if you have a 10% solution, okay, now you don't, you have a 1% or 0.1% solution, but a 10% solution would mean you have 10 grams of a substance in 90 milliliters of the solvent. Now in this case, the solvent is water. And the stuff that is dissolving, it's called the solute. And the solute is sodium chloride. So I've got 10 grams of salt in 90 milliliters of water. And if I add that up, it's 100. So, um, so that's how we get a 10% solution. Um, uh, it's 10 grams of salt and 90 milliliters of water, but I don't, I don't need uh, that much. I just need a little bit to, to uh, line the bottom of this cup. So I need hardly any, uh, but um, anyway, that's not a 10% solution, it's a 1% solution. So a 1% solution would be one gram in 99 milliliters of water um, hang on just a second. Uh, all righty, so we have now a 10% solution and then a 1% solution. 1% uh, solution is one gram and 99, so 99 milliliters water. So, so we can write it like this, one gram of salt in 99 milliliters of water, but that's 1%, we don't even need 1%, we need a, a 0.1% solution. So in a 0.1% solution, you're going to put 0 0.01 um, grams of NaCl. And it's going to add up to 100, remember? Well, then if you're going to add that up to 100. It's just going to be 99.9 .9 milliliters of water. Now, um, the equipment I have doesn't measure it that, that deeply. And so... Um, that, that precisely. So what I'm going to do instead is I do have a balance here. And I'm going to use that to um, measure out 0.1 grams of, uh, of sodium chloride. Um, but uh, another thing, another way to look at it is that if if you had a 10% solution, that would be uh, 10 in a total of 100 uh, milliliters. You can so it look would look like this. You're making a, a quick solution that doesn't need to be exact. 
So you do 10 grams in 100 milliliters. Now up here I said 90, and that's more precisely a 10% solution. Okay, but if it, if it didn't matter much, and uh, you just need to do a, a quick thing, it would be 10 grams divided by 10 milliliters. We don't want we don't want a um, a 10% solution. We don't even want a 1% solution. We want a 0.1% solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this, and it's not going to be as precise. I can measure it to 0.1 grams precisely, but I can't. I can measure this to to a plus or minus one with my graduate cylinder. So um, so over here, I'm going to go 0.1 grams over 99.9 .9 milliliters. So let's do that. I'm going to turn on the electronic balance here, it's right here, 0.1. So I need 0.1 grams of salt. So right now it's it's going to zero, which makes sense. And then I'm going to take a piece of filter paper and fold that so that it can easily be poured from one place to another. And then we're going to mass that out. And it weighs 0.9, but I can tear this also, T-A-R-E. And what I can do is hit the zero, and now it automatically subtracts the weight of the paper. So I've got, uh, the, I'm going to pour this directly on the paper. And I'm using rock salt. You might not have rock salt available. It doesn't matter. Uh, whatever salt you have is going to uh, go down. Oh, ah, good guess. So that was 0.1 grams of salt. I'm going to go ahead and put 0.1 grams of salt in the uh, 100. Uh, I have 100 milliliters of water. Uh, right here, you can see 90. But when I put this flat on the table, there's 100 right there. It's hard to see on the, with the plastic, but I'll, I'll try to show it to you right there. Okay, let's focus it. All right, and you can see the bottom of the curve of the liquid. It's called the meniscus. The meniscus should be hitting the 100 line. And that's pretty, pretty close, about as close as I'm going to get it. Um, and yeah, it's, I think we're good to go. So I'm going to take that 100 grams and I'm going to put it in a beaker. So I have a glass beaker here. And I'm going to put 100 grams of water in the glass beaker from the graduated cylinder. I have a, uh, a wooden stick for stirring purposes. I'm going to take the salt and put it in there. You can see it's hardly any salt at all. But now, if you can see at the bottom, you can see uh, that it is going to need to dissolve. So it's better if you have salt, uh, table salt, because those are smaller crystals and will dissolve quicker. But you don't even need this much. You just need a really small quantity. Um, and so I can still see them right there. So hopefully, we'll get those to dissolve. Um, and while, while those are dissolving, we're going to go ahead and take this guy right here. And what we're going to, I'll show you what we're going to do before we do it. I have a, another cup. If you're a Gorman student, um, you have one of these in your lab kit. Uh, if you don't have one of these, if you're uh, just viewing this for fun or in lieu of an in-class lab, uh, you just need a glass speaker about the same size. This one's a 250 milliliter beaker. You could use that, or you could use um, a even like a you know a old spaghetti jar or something. This we're going to dry fit this. We're going to take this and we're going to put this in here like this, right? But we're going to put the liquid in there a little bit so that you. Um, uh, what's going to happen is the liquid as it goes up the paper, that's going to separate the chemicals that are in the food dye. Okay, so let's check on the check on the salt water again, and it looks like it has dissipated. I don't see it anymore. Oh, I see see one right there. It's about half gone. There's the other one. So still got a little bit of time, and so I'm stirring to increase the rate of uh, the reaction there. I could also heat it up, as you know from previous chemistry experiences, but we're going to take that and we're going to try to separate these uh, uh, colors and separate the, separate the chemicals 
that make up those colors. So um, let me take a short pause and we're gonna wait for those, uh, wait for the salt to dissolve. I need to mention because most of you don't have um, an electronic balance. Uh, you can make the salt solution with just a bottle of water. Uh, it's about a teaspoon in two cups of, uh, of water. So that's like a, a water bottle with, uh, and here's the salt. And so you can just take a normal spoon, a teaspoon, and get a teaspoon of salt. There's a teaspoon of salt. Again, I'm using rock salt, but that's because that's what I had. I would have used uh, table salt if I had table salt. So I'm gonna put that right there and uh, open this up. Um, and I'm gonna put this on a piece of filter paper like this. Okay, there it is. And then I'm just gonna pour this in my water bottle and uh, you'll do the same, I'll be, just about the same as the 0.1% salt solution. Remember, you don't have to have filter paper for this. You could just use a piece of scratch paper. And so now I have it in here. Now I've got to, if I'm going to use this one, then I got to wait till the uh, rock salt dissolves. If you have table salt, it's going to dissolve almost instantly. Uh, I can see for me, I have some at the bottom right there. So I'm gonna shake it around a little bit, just like I was stirring the other one. But if we look back at the other one, maybe it's done already. And yeah, it is. So let's go ahead and take this. I'm gonna put this on the bottom of the speaker or cup. You can do this in a cup, but because it doesn't have to be a scientific cup, it just you have it, you might as well use it. So there I just lined the bottom of the of the beaker with the liquid like that. And then I'm gonna take the, uh, the paper that we made that we just spotted, and I'm gonna put that at the bottom of the cup. Uh, the directions say that you can use a pencil to wrap this around it. You don't really need to do that. I'm just gonna curve it a little bit. And then we're gonna stick that in the, in the beaker. So let's go ahead and do that. Ready, set, go. Okay. And so now I've got the solution coming up. What's going to happen is the salt water is going to come up to paper. And as the salt water comes up to paper, it's going to separate the, the chemicals that make up the food coloring. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and let that run. And I'll let you watch that. And I'm going to mute myself so you can concentrate on watching the colors separate.
All right, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, chromatography paper out of the chamber. Um, and I put this on a paper towel right here. I also have uh, next to the beakers, the uh, four different dyes so that you can see the, uh, the, uh, the labels. And so you, the labels tell you actually what colors, what, uh, what dyes, what artificial colors are in each of these. As you can see this one right here, that it's artificial red. Uh, red number what is that 40? Can't see. It's kind of small. Uh, it looks like red number 40. See if we can focus that a little bit better. All righty. And if you take a look at the labels, uh, before you look at the labels, let's take a look at our results. I'm going to go ahead and take that out, just straight out. And I'm going to let that dry. Now, one thing I do when we do this experiment uh, with photosynthesis is we, we do something similar, but we actually measure the distance traveled. We can calculate a value called the uh, retardation factor or RF. We will not be calculating RF today, but what we wanted to do was we want to look at the different colors that make up each of the four different food colorings. And so some of them are made up of even three different colors. Hopefully you can see that. Some are made up of two and some are made up of one. Okay. If you uh, want you to, I, I would say try to figure that out and then go back uh, in this video and take a look at the labels of the, of the food coloring uh, jars so that you can, you can see if you were right. Also, after this dries out, um, you're going to want to answer the analysis questions here on the handout. And so you have one, two, three there. And then you also have four and five. All righty. Uh, at this point, you do not have to do the you're the chemist uh, part of the handout. If you could just answer one through five. And if I directed you to write a full lab report, then go ahead and uh, use a screenshot of, of our uh, chromatogram. You need a screenshot of that, and then you need the answers to the questions in order to have a complete lab report. So there it is right there. If you, if you want to take a screenshot, then you can cut and splice it and make it look nice, then that would be a good thing. Okay. All right. Good luck on the rest of this. Good luck on your analysis and your uh, concluding paragraph as you write up your lab report. I'm Mr. Vallejo and, and uh, thanks for coming to Chemistry Lab today. All right. Bye-bye.